Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today we're doing another review and demonstration on the Segola GTO. Uh, the air cap is tech and it's, yeah, it's car, GTO tech car or something like that. So I actually did a review on this gun, it must have been about two years ago now. And from memory, I gave it a pretty good review. Uh, I haven't actually gone back and watched that review to brush up on it. So I thought, you know, I'd start this review or the re-review fresh. Uh, without any, you know, previous opinions tainting it. So, look, they said that they've done a couple of minor, more aesthetic updates to this gun. Um, so this is one of the first things. They've actually included a identification ring um, option for down the bottom of your gun. So it's one of those things that if you've got two or three of them, you could say have a base coat one, a clear coat one, a wet on wet one, and you could have them, um, you know, you, you would know which one is which because you could have a different color on each one of those guns so you know I guess that's a welcome inclusion I do appreciate the fact that they give you a good quality uh, cheater valve or gauge you know and that's handy to have so that obviously has to add value to the gun and look at the end of the day these are a really well built spray gun you know that when you've got this in your hand you know that it's um it's been built uh, to good quality standards you know that you yeah, you've got a good quality gun in your hand. So this is always one of the first things I do when I get a new Segola, and that is rip off this anti-drip lid. Just get those fingers in there and jam it down. You should be able to get it off um, because it just uh, gets in the way. It does fill up with paint when you clean it. Well, you you can't clean it properly because it like it just ends up filling up with paint in there. Not really necessary, I don't find. Um, I, I don't know why more spray gun manufacturers don't put the lid like on your Devilbus and iWatters. The top of the lid has a slightly raised section so that you don't need those uh, janky little extra parts that can fall off and yeah, get in the way and all that kind of stuff. And you can lose them and then you can actually end up it, that little swivel thing that goes on top of the pot. It, like, if you're not careful, it can end up spraying thinners in your face when you're back pressuring the gun. I don't know, you probably shouldn't back pressure your gun, but I do, and I know a lot of other painters do, so you just gotta be careful you don't get yourself in the eyes when you are back pressuring your gun. Um, but yeah, look, I decided to give you guys a look at everything with this review, so we'll be using it with base coat, clear coat, and some wet on wet primer, and some direct gloss, or VOC top coat. 2K. So a couple of the other things they reckon that they've improved is the gun body itself. They said they've done a little bit more machining and polishing to the body of the spray gun itself. And I think that they are right. So because I did this review like a couple of years ago, I actually sold the other one of these uh, just on the cheap to a guy that I work with. So he uses it for wet on wet and sometimes even direct gloss, uh, you know, 2K top coat. Um, and yeah, I did actually hold the gun next to this one, and this one did look like it's just a little bit more polished on the edges. Um, so yeah, they have done that. I guess that's really just an incremental change. So this gun here, it is in the mid range. It's not like really expensive, but it's not ultra cheap as well, you know? So it's not, it's not sub $200. It's, well, they sent me an email saying that it should hit the Australian market at around 380 Australian dollars. So. Look, I think it's reasonable for what it is, but uh, to be honest, the Pro Light just kills it. You know what I mean? The Pro Light is probably only fifty to a hundred dollars more than it, and what you get out of that Pro Light, it's just so much more. You know what I mean? So the versatility of all the different air caps, the fluid tips, and all of what you can get with a Pro Light, honestly, just makes this not something that I would recommend to be honest I mean don't get me wrong you're not gonna get yourself a bad gun that isn't capable of doing good quality jobs if you do buy this gun I mean it's totally fine as you can see here I'm spraying the um, metallic base coat with it and you know it lays it down just fine the main thing I've noticed with this gun is that it nearly gets it um, too fine of an atomization so I can imagine it wouldn't be the best for um, light metallics so silvers and stuff like that on warm days and yeah it's a little bit slower than especially the uh, 4600 Segola um, those things are an absolute cannon. Segola really did take the 
criticism that came to them with the 4500 Extreme. They definitely took it seriously and they made uh, the 4600s absolute weapons. So I'd say two big thumbs up to Segola for that, for actually listening to what people had to say about their gun and acting upon it. I like companies that do that. You, you do get some companies that they'll just like bury their head in the sand and no matter what their fans say, uh, you are wrong. They know better because they make it. Now one thing that I've always noticed with this gun, if you spray it, you can sort of like see heavy and light spots in that fan. That's why I actually decided to slow that down there. To me it's pretty obvious, in right in that spot back there where I slowed the footage down, to me I can see yeah, heavy and light spots in that fan. Now, I've never actually seen it um, result in an uneven finish or anything like that, but it's still something that I could notice in the fan itself. So, it's still even top from top to bottom. So, in saying that, I mean like it's not spraying top heavy or bottom heavy or it's not like a banana. That's a common um, spray gun fault when you've got, I don't know, a build up of something on around the the fluid tip or you know a little bit of clear left over in one of the holes it's it's not like it's um a faulty spray pattern it, it's actually like maybe i'm even spraying with too high a pressure maybe this you know maybe two bar is a little bit too much for this gun because um when i do lower the pressure a little bit it does appear to sort of go away a little bit so yeah look I, if there's anyone else out there who knows more about that fault in a spray gun I would be um, interested to know because um, now I think about it I saw Motivated Painter did a video on the SATA X5500 I 1.2 I or whatever he got a demo gun and it was sort of spraying similar to that like it had he, he sprayed his blue um, paint onto the, the side of his um, car on his um, masking paper and you could just see these tiger stripes the entire way through the car so obviously his was much worse than this one because as I say I, I can actually not fault the end result now as I say I'll be interested to hear if there is anyone else out there who does know a little bit more out about this um, uneven fan pattern um, Sada Man Schmidt he's probably one that comes to mind he's uh, usually got a couple of good bits of information there for me. He seems to know a lot about, um, a lot more about spray guns than I do. I'm more of a chuck the gun in, uh, chuck the paint in the gun, see how it sprays, and uh, it's either good or it isn't. I like how it sprays or it doesn't. And at the end of the day, these days, man, like pretty much any gun that's around this price bracket and above, you'll be able to get a good finish with. You know, it's it's like. Uh, I did this video on a really, really bad spray gun. I probably should have cleaned it out properly and I copped a bit of flack for that, probably fairly so. But, you know, it's <laughs> that's probably going a little bit too far. Like the $10 spray gun might be going a bit too far to say that you can get a good finish out of it. But you probably can. But <laughs> I guess my point was that it, it's more the painter behind the gun than the gun these days. It, I don't know. I, th I think the technology has come so far these days in, in spray guns that it's kind of peaked and started to plateau, um, which is why I don't really recommend spending, I don't know, any, whatever the price of a Pro Light is, don't spend more than that, because <laughs> it is the best gun on the market. And to me, look, the Pro Light kind of does kill this gun. It's just in that, it's that in-betweener price bracket, and you, you sort of lose the versatility with the air caps, you know what I mean? Um, if they did have another extra air cap or two, maybe that would change the story on this gun. But um, one thing I have noticed is that the overall diameter of the air cap is a little bit smaller on this um, GTO than what it is on your Pro Lights. And one thing I noticed that in DeVilbus's um, evolution, I guess, from their GTI, their original GTI, which I think was called the Millennium in um, the USA, so from the original GTI to the GTI Pro, I put down that the biggest development was the, the wider or the, the larger diameter of the, the uh, air cap and that obviously opened the fan up a little bit and gave you like a larger wet area that you're able to wet at the same time. So yeah, and this gun here does have that slightly smaller fan, slightly thinner fan as well I noticed. Uh, but yeah, look, you know, you can barely fault the finish on it. You know, if, if you just want something different, you had enough of Gunny saying, hey, get the Pro Light, get the Pro Light. You know, I always bang on about how awesome they are. Um, 
And that's only because it's the truth. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> you know, if you had enough of all these, you know, different spray guns and, and you just want something different, if you've had enough of the norm, it's a good option, you know. I'm also going to be, yeah, keeping an uh, ear open for what Segola has to say about the way that that, um, that fan is a little bit tiger stripey or it's a little bit uneven because, as I said before, they do seem to take criticism quite well. They are a company that does take a lot of pride in the, the things that they make and you know I wish them all the best of luck with uh, what do they do in the future. A couple of things they gave me absolutely love. So if you do want a buying recommendation for Segola things, I would say their Stone Guard or Body Dead in a Gun is the best on the market. It's like a Body Dead in a Gun but it's got settings on it like you can adjust the air pressure, you can adjust the um, the fan size, the fluid, everything. So it's just amazing, really well built. And also they've got another good seam sealer gun, air powered seam sealer gun. I actually showed that off in uh, another video I did called Amazing Trick for Seam Sealer, Amazing Seam Sealer Trick, something like that. Um, but either way, as I promised before, I've show, I'm showing you guys now a bit of wet on wet primer application. Uh, so, you know, just to kind of show that this is a all-rounder gun, you know, like it, it, it is something that you can sort of use for anything. Uh, well built, you know, it's going to last a long time. Bit of a, sh bit of a question mark about that fan, but as I say, you, that's what I'm trying to show you here, but it actually showed up more so on that clear coat job when I was, um, yeah, clearing that uh, Mitsubishi Triton at the start of this video. But yeah, now we're about to lay down some VOC top coat and yeah, again, just get a nice, tight, factory-looking finish for this Toyota. It's probably one of those guns that you would struggle to get the European finishes with, you know. Uh, you could obviously play around with it and in the right hands, you could do it, but it's, it really does want to get it on nice and fine, more of a flatter finish. And here we are picking out a big bit of fluff from the fender. It must have got caught in that indicator hole. So yeah, let us know what you guys think of the looks of this gun. I'm interested to hear from anyone else who has this gun. Would you recommend it? Be sure to let your voice be heard. If you have one of these and you would recommend it, let everyone else know in the comments section below if you've had any bad experiences with it or good experiences with your Segolas over the years, let us know. All that aside, I hope you guys did enjoy watching. If you did, leave us a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here. Hit that subscribe button. And until next time, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching. This has been another Gunman Production. Goodbye.